Oh my gosh, I love this hutch. It's been sitting in our garage for nine months and Mr. SEO is ready to have some space back in that garage. We were a little overwhelmed by this piece when we first got it last March, but now we're ready to tackle it and we're gonna tackle it in two parts. This week, we're just dealing with the top of this hutch and check out that glass. It's handmade, warpy, bubbly, curvy glass. I love it. Do you remember when we first got it? We didn't realize that the top would come apart from the bottom. And we were like, no one's going to buy this. China cabinets are just no, not popular anymore. Absolutely. So I'm glad we just waited on it until we had a really great ideas for both the top and bottom completely separate from each other. Our first task is to get these doors off and get them stored away somewhere safely because they look pretty fragile with that bubble glass. I was really nervous about breaking one of these doors, but thankfully they made it through safe and sound for the most part. But we may have broken some other things, but we'll get there. One of the great things about this piece is that it is solid wood. No veneer anywhere, it's just beautiful. But it's Arizona here, which means it's very dry and very hot and wood tends to crack after many years. There was a big crack going right down the center of this wall here. So I pulled out my trusty old wood glue and you know, tried to shove glue in that crack and then we clamped it. It was a little awkward, so I hope it, it glues up well. <laughs> I'm ready, go ahead. Okay. Well, we normally get this done in the beginning, but it's time to get it done finally now that we've got some repairs done. We need to clean using LA's totally awesome degreaser concentrate diluted with a bunch of water. We're gonna wipe this all down cause boy, this thing was dusty. So has anyone else noticed that Danny is MIA for this dirty work? And, you, and for a, <laughs> a lot of the sanding too. It's like, where is she? Okay, I know my mom is having so much fun with our new Sir Prep Sander. Does this anyone notice what's different? I, I don't know what happened. I was just like so fascinated with how it was working. I totally forgot to hook it up to the, the dust extractor. So there was dust flying everywhere. When did you remember when you were finally covered in dust? I know. <laughs> Oh, I know I'm like why is it so dusty you know I can't see there's dust flying around yeah it's crazy <laughs> Hey, so I know many of you know that I just got a new toy. I got a surf prep. So I am trying it out on this side here. Um, and then later I switch back to my orbital because the, there's nothing that beats the orbital uh, when you just need to strip off all the, the old finish. We are taking 
the sides of this piece down to raw wood and then we're going to restain it and keep that natural looking and we'll be painting the interior of the piece. I changed the sandpaper for the interior. I switched from a 80 grit coarse sandpaper to a 180 just to scuff this finish up so I could um, paint it. On that crack, the glue worked pretty good, but there was still a ridge that was left. I couldn't get them, the two edges to meet perfectly. So I pulled out my Bondo and I'm just gonna do a, a skim coat over it just to smooth that ridge out. Woo, look at those curves. Thank you, Sir Prep Sander, for saving us so much time here. Mom, remember when we were just using hand sanding for the curves like this? Think how long that would have taken us. Yeah, baby, surf's up. <laughs> For this project, we are using Melange 1, which is one of our favorite paints. It has a built-in primer and a built-in top coat, and it's just wonderful. This color is Vagabond Blue. Ooh, I think I'm gonna like this one. Yeah, it is really nice. A very deep navy color, just gorgeous. And I'm using a zebra brush. It's their round brush. It's perfect for those corners. It really is. And this was a tight space, so it was pretty challenging to get everything painted correctly. Anywhere we're going to keep natural wood, we want to make sure to use mineral spirits over it first before we add any stain or poly. And this is to help reveal any flaws, any swirl marks on our sanding. And well, the hand says it all, looks like it's perfect and ready for stain. I just want to ask a quick question. Where's Waldo? <laughs> I mean Danny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm M-I-A, obviously. If you've been following our videos, you know our recent favorite stain is the Minwax Gel Stain in Chestnut. We love this. So that's what I'm using today. And I have a, a really cool little sponge applicator. Uh, what are those called, Danny? Staining oh, pad. A staining pad, yeah. And so it's really easy to wipe it off, wipe it on, and wipe it off in one swoop. I 
don't know what you're talking about, Mom. Here I am helping the whole time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, but really, we need to figure out how to get these wood things out because we are not going to sand with the glass so close to these X's. Danny, what are you doing? Be careful. Mom, it's fine. This thing has so much give. We just need to go a little further so that we can pull it out. I don't know. Is anyone else nervous about this? Okay, I'm a little nervous, but I think it's going to work. Just a little bit further. It's almost out. There you no! Oh. No! No! What? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Hey, but it's out. It's gonna be fine. Thank goodness for wood glue. <laughs> oh no. Well, well. This happened. <laughs> this was not part of the plan. I know. <laughs> Maybe we should have just removed the glass. I feel like we made ourselves more work because now we're gonna have to sand this down, stain it, wood glue, somehow fit it all back in without breaking it again. Um, yeah. Well, um, that's what we do. We'll make it. We'll make it good. That's right. I we promise. fix things and we build things. And speaking of fixing things, Mom. Yes, I am just sick about this. When I started sanding on this frame yesterday, I didn't realize that this glass, this glass is like bubbly, and it was touching the table, and I had no tell. As it was pressing on the table, it scratched it all up. So mom's just happily sanding and I the know. glass is going. Rrr, rrr, rrr. No, I had no idea. So stupid. So. No. <laughs> okay, not stupid, just oblivious. So. so I'm going to go to YouTube and see what I can do to fix it up. Or at least minimize the scratches, yes. the appearance of them. So wish us luck. For the first time ever, I am using a carbide scraper. Oh, that sound. But this helps get that finish off the lacquer. So it really makes sanding go much faster because we're getting to bare wood on these doors because we're just going to stain them, not paint them. But um, yeah, I hope mom appreciates the easier sanding after I all do. this. I do. Because, <laughs> oh man, that noise is horrible. We're going to be building a tall base for this hutch to get it up off the ground. It's going to be just like DIY wife's furniture base that she gives a tutorial and teaches that. We'll link her video below. But we're obviously going to make some adaptations to it in order to make it much taller than like a base for a dresser. So we're looking for two by twos right now, Sammy and I. And if you have not looked for wood at a big box store, holy moly, it takes a while, especially this wood. A lot of bark was still left on, a lot of cracks, a lot of chips, a lot of dings, and the bowing. So really, before you pick out your pieces, examine them to make sure it's going to work for what you need. Otherwise, you're just throwing money down the drain. I think Sammy and I went through a hundred pieces before we found two that worked.
Okay, so I found a safe way to cut these angled feet because that was the one area that Andrea at DIY Wife kind of left out because she just kind of does it by eye and by hand each time. But this I created so that I could get the same angle safely every time. So you're gonna start by making a template board, cut it to exactly 45 degrees. And then you move your miter saw and set it to 40 degrees. See how they're lined up just like that? And now when I put my piece of wood in there, it's going to shave off just a sliver, giving us the perfect angle for those furniture legs for the feet at the very bottom. After sanding the face of these pieces down, it is time for pocket holes. And I used to dread pocket holes because we had the Craig Jig El Cheapo. I can't remember what it was called, but it was so hard to use and my hand just couldn't clamp it all the way down. So we upgraded to the Craig Jig K5 and man, what a lifesaver. I can bust out a ton of pocket holes in 15 minutes now. And really, that's how long every single pocket hole took for this project. And it's get her done day. So while Danny's back at her place staining that new base, I'm going to be fixing some of our goof ups. So let's start off with the glass. And I found that you can take some white toothpaste and a clean microfiber cloth and a little bit of water and just swirl on that glass, rub it gently for about 30 seconds and it does take out some of the scratches. I didn't get them all out, but it looks a lot better. And finally, it's time to fix our fretwork crossbars. I just took some wood glue, put them into place, and used these cool little mini clamps to just clamp them while they dry. You guys are the best. Because of your support, we are officially monetized on YouTube. Which right now means we make an average of a dollar and fifty cents per day. But I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I told my kids if we make ten dollars in the first month, we're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of laughed at me, but you know what? It still goes to say we are so grateful for you being here. For every like, every comment, every subscribe, you guys mean the world to us, and you are helping our little company dreams come true.
So thanks for being here and aloha.